And here are today's finalists. Kent Wagner in fifth place. He won the Showboat Invitational in Las Vegas earlier this season. He will meet fourth place qualifier Tom Breaker, who already has seven PBA titles to his credit. In third place, the always colorful Marshall Holman. 19-year-old Jimmy Keith qualified in second place and is making his second championship round appearance in 1987. And our tournament leader, Bob Handley, who needs a win here today to re-qualify for the Firestone Tournament of Champions. That's our field today on the Professional Bowlers Tour. Capacity crowd here at the Bradley Bowl where the 44 lanes have taken a tremendous pounding all week for the $140,000 Greater Hartford Open. We're glad to be back in the Nutmeg State. I'm Chris Shankel, and this is a part of the country that's often been called the land of steady habits. And how true it is. Consistent, friendly, wonderful people. In our field of five, a total of 31 titles accumulated. And uh, there are two that need to win today, and it's impossible, only one can to re-qualify or qualify for the Firestone Tournament of Champions. Later on this afternoon, ABC's Wide World of Sports, a World Wilderweight Championship bout from London, England, Hunnigan versus Blocker, two undefeated welterweights, to be followed by the Wood Memorial, the race for three-year-olds. It's another step toward the Kentucky Derby and the Athlete of the Week Award, also on Wide World of Sports. Well, speaking of doubles, today we have a unique situation in bowling, husband-wife professionals, both bowling on television, hoping for the top prize. To explain that a little bit further, here's a man that won twice here at the Greater Hartford Open, my colleague Nelson Burton, Jr. Bo. Thank you, Chris. As you alluded to, Chris, we have a husband-wife team on the line. Lisa Wagner is in uh, Ohio right now, bowling in the finals of the $200,000 U.S. Open tournament, and his wife is in third place in Kent. Obviously, she's going to be on later. You're in the fifth place. You're going on right now. you have any advice for her? Just take her time and try as hard as she can. Do you have any idea what Lisa averaged in the tournament? She told me she was averaging uh, almost as much as you. Can she beat you anyway? She could beat me. That's no, <laughs> no problem about that. But I don't know about the average what she's been bowling there. Well, I think you're going to do pretty well here. Um, she has a message for you and said... Work very hard. She says you got to win four games, and if you don't, she'll see you next week. Okay. Good luck. <laughs> and I'm sure that she will have Hi, good Kent. luck. Good I'm luck, here Kent. From Cleveland, wishing you all the best of luck. Let's make some history today, and maybe we'll both win. Let's hope so. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Good luck, Kent. And now, Chris, they're ready for some action. Thank you. Okay. Hundreds of miles apart, and here in the greater hartford area 23,000 is the the money that ken is shooting for 12 for second eight six and five we're ready for that first match tom baker is kent wagner's opponent tom with seven titles 32 year old native of buffalo new york one of the really neat professionals on the tour and has been for 11 years here's his first stroke probably see a lot of that this afternoon. It's a 10 pin on the left lane, Bo. Chris, the championship here, uh, I think most of the players are going to have no trouble reaching the pocket. The scores have been very good all week. And as Tommy Baker is signaling down to the, the pit area where the pins are set up, he threw the first ball at the 10 pin and the machine sw uh, swept the 10 pin off. So obviously it has to be reset. And uh, Talking once again, the environment we're in, we have a 44-lane Boeing Center right across from Bradley International Airport. This has, this has been the site of a PBA tournament since 1974. So Baker taking his time across lane for the 10. Well, this is a house you know. You won the first two events. You've got it zeroed in. 74-75, Baker here in 87. Incidentally, Bo finished 23rd this week. And he told me that next week in the Firestone Tournament of Champions, he will finish much higher. Okay, <laughs> Kent Wagner now. Here he comes. Uh, you saw his wife, Lisa, from Ohio. Here is a 120-pounder, by far the smallest in the field, a stylist. High hit and leaves the four-pin on the right lane. The championship pair, the left-hand lane, the players tell me, does not hook quite as much as the right-hand lane. As you see the style of Kent Wagner, 
as you alluded to, Chris, very slightly built, but it gets a high backswing, drives through very hard with that right foot, that pivot step. Not very low at the line, but in his size, you don't have to get down that close. With a moderate amount of speed, he covers the four pin to mark with a spare. So we're all even through one frame here in the finals of the Greater Hartford Open. We're live. Outside, it's uh, overcast and a bit moist day, but spring is on its way in the East Coast. In a moment, when we get a chance to look at this man's shoes, interesting story. Another 10, again, on the left lane. The, the solid 10, once again, you'll see the six pin right here just fly around the top of the 10. When it lays down here in the channel, it's called the weak 10. When it elevates right around the 10, the solid 10. Now, there's nothing much a pro or amateur alike can do anything about that. Just go right back to the same place. And gets it. Nearly sticking at the line. Something we'll have to watch. And Tom Baker, who last one in Rochester, New York in 1986, the Kodak Invitational. It's his 35th television appearance over the years. Tom Baker, classic style, semi-fingertip grip, index finger spread wide, nice five-step delivery. And it just didn't come up, leaving the one, two, four, six, ten. Right here you see Tom Baker as he gets ready to execute the shot that caused him a lot of problem, a five-pin washout. Right here at the line, he should stay down, but he, he raises up just a little bit at the foul line, doesn't get the lift, as Chris alluded to, a very difficult washout, an unusual washout spare. Uh, yes. That's why he's been able to win seven BVI titles. You've got to come up with shots like that at crucial times. Very difficult because you have to take out both the six and ten pins with the head pin. The six pin makes it quite a, quite a bit much more problem, Chris, uh, than it does when just the ten pins in there. His last appearance was at the Quaker State in Grand Prairie, Texas, 1983. Okay, and he says, uh, go ahead, it's all yours, Kent Wagner. Kent Wagner, two different bowling shoes. Chris, the reason that is his dog ate the yeah, other yellow shoe. I love it. <laughs> his golden retriever. <laughs> <laughs> if now we have a six pen on the right lane. We're getting some smiles from both competitors. Ken Wagner, one of the problems he has with his game sometimes, he drops that right shoulder and he plays that extreme outside line. And if he pulls it across his body to get it up to the head pin, he crosses over. He could have tripped the six out on this particular shot, but he ended up with an easy spare. Okay, consistency now on the part of both professionals. Three pins separating them. We're in the first match. The winner will meet Marshall Holman, who will be in his 87th television appearance. And... Um, he believes, too, that he's long overdue. Following that will be 19-year-old Jimmy Keith of West Palm Beach, Florida, and then Bob Hanley from Pompano Beach. And that was the stroke of uh, Palmetto, Florida, on the west coast of that state. 4-8. Watch the action of the head pin right here as it goes over the sideboard. It takes all the pins out but just the four and eight pins is a little more difficult spare because he could chop the four off the eight. Okay, we have a very, very close match. One pin separating these two pros. More after this. best things are the real things, and draft beer is the real beer. Miller's Genuine Draft. Oh, yeah. it's a real Time for an oil change, but we're not 
using your Quaker State. We're switching to something better. New Quaker State with QSX. Introducing New Quaker State with QSX because car carrying people want superior engine protection. Look at the sludge conventional motor oils leave behind. New Quaker State with QSX keeps engines cleaner to last longer. I knew you'd like it. Ready? Yeah. Hey, no! New Quaker State Just because you've washed your car doesn't mean you're finished. After each wash, you need some armor all on the dash, the bumper, and especially the tires. Armor all. It's the finishing touch every time you wash your car. You're my dream. And now, introducing Clean Start, the new cleaner which safely removes tough dirt. Clean Start, only from Armor All products. Here at the Bradley Bowl in the Greatford Hartford area, Windsor Locks, this man from Buffalo, New York, trailing by one pin. He has a strike up. He can take a nine pin lead with a strike. Another ten pin. Once again, we see the players around the pocket, but nobody able to put two strikes together. In fact, Kent Wagger has no strikes through the first four frames. Not what we really expected, but Chris in Cleveland, what, four or five weeks ago, we expected big scores. Nobody struck the first four or five frames and then they went wild for the last hour. So I expect that to happen here again today. Okay, a little earlier, Bo asked Tom Baker why he's cut back from being a power player. Oh boy, I broke my wrist when I was 18 years old. It was never set right. And six years ago, I had corrective surgery on it, and it's still not right today. What I've done in the past is, uh, I used to throw a big powerful hook, and what I've done is I had to cut down to a more finesse style, slow ball type of bowler than I am today. And what I do is out there is just try to hit my mark and uh, try to keep it as straight as I can. And on that shot, the five goes late, leaving the two pin for Tom Baker, 32 year old Tom Baker. And obviously, Tom Baker, a little light on the shot. The head pin goes to the left, drives out the four. Five and eight, leaving a very simple spare to trail by two pins to Kent Wagner. Player is not zeroed in yet. Baker, an easy spare. Okay. Kent Wagner's back up. He won the Showboat Invitational this year, and uh, he could join Randy Peterson, uh, the only two time winners this year. So in our 15 tournaments, we've had 14 different winners. frame for Kent Wagner. Let's check Wagner's footwork from uh, behind. Just raw talent here as you watch his footwork and comes up to the foul line. He almost fouls as he comes through with that pivot step and drives up through the foul line, sliding just about a half inch behind the foul line. Once again, you could see the trajectory of the ball about the seventh board in from the right-hand channel. Now Wagner, 12 pin, uh, 10, pardon me, two pin lead can make it 12. Slid by and only the five pin wobbles. Both players afraid to charge the pocket. And here we get a great break by Wagner. The head pin goes to the sideboard. He could have left the two, four, five, and seven. He gets all the pins down except for the five pin. Good break. Easy spare, two pin lead. Well, in this game, we won't see a 300 for sure. But during the week, there were three, Gary Dickinson, Greg Rourke and Guppy Troop. But who knows, we have three more games to go. The winner of this first game will meet Marshall Holman, an incredible, incredible athlete. Baker with a spare up, right lane. Next week, 52 champions will be in the Firestone Tournament of Champions, Bowling's Crown Jewel. And look at it, $250,000 at stake. We'll be live from Akron, Bo. 52-man field will go on at 3 o'clock Eastern time. The third jewel in Bowling's Triple Crown. The other two major titles, the U.S. Open, 
which we saw the first cello cast in Seattle, and the PBA National Championship, which Randy Peterson won in Toledo. And you see Tommy Baker fiddling around with that whole thumb hole, trying to get a good feel. He trails by two pins. If he can strike here in the seventh, he'll take the lead. And now he takes an eight-pin lead. Tom Baker going to take a break and then return for more action. Mom's magic meatloaf is weighing on you like a ton of bricks. Send the bubbles of Alka-Seltzer to the rescue because speed is what you need to lift the heaviness off your stomach and relieve your heartburn and pounding headache fast. So for fast relief, let the bubbles rise to the occasion. Alka-Seltzer to the rescue. Try new extra strength Alka-Seltzer. More of what you take Alka-Seltzer for. When you buy a new lawnmower, you want to believe that each one will be the last you'll ever have to buy. But in time, it becomes painfully clear that not all lawnmowers are engineered to last. Knowing this, why would you settle for anything less than a Honda? Year after year, the right tool for mowing the lawn. Lloyd Honeycomb defends his welterweight crown live, plus the Wood Memorial Invitational on ABC's Wide World of Sports, next. On Wide World Next, Thoroughbred Racing and World Welterweight Championship Boxing. Here's a one-time champion, Kent Wagner. Sliding by. Hmm. Leaving the 2578. Kind of an unusual split as Kent Wagner slides by the head pin and just nips the side of it. The head pin goes to the sideboard, knocks the four pin out. And what he has to do here, Chris, is two angles of attack. He can either try to bounce the ball between the two and sevens, two and seven pins, or try to drive the two over it. No way. Costly error for Kent Wagner. Two different styles out here. Wagner likes to overpower the pins, use speed to control the lane. In other words, if a ball goes too high, he likes to throw a little harder. If it doesn't come up to the head pin, throw a little slower. Where Baker, if he goes high, he makes the traditional move to the left. If he misses light, he moves to the right. And now he has left a two pin. I have a feeling that he's hurrying things just a bit. Good point. And historically, in this bowling center, and all week it proved out, Chris, as the lanes begin to hook more and more, the scores come up. Yesterday morning, Friday morning, all the players struggled the first game or so. Once the lanes began to hook, the scores went real high. Okay. We'll look for that. Get Wagner looking up at the overhead score sheets as Palmer Falgren, our steady, reliable, weekly statistician, tells us that there's a 24-pin difference that can be increased to 34. This man is in the lead, shooting in the eighth frame. Double up. That's a, a high hit, three, six, nine, ten. Well, we've seen them all, Bo. You're right, Chris, and uh, I think this is the toughest spares that professional bowlers have to have to shoot. The three, six, nine, ten. As you see, Baker with that somewhat outside trajectory sends the ball out near the channel. Cannot control the hook in the last five feet. He's left himself a difficult spare. Now, he'll try to shoot that down the right side. We say shoot most spares in the right-hand corner from the left-hand side of the lane. This particular spare, because you have to carry out the nine pin, should be shot right down the right-hand channel. Right there. Beautifully done. Now, he's made two big marks today. Marked with spares, tough shots. And a 20-pin difference as we go down into the most critical frames of all of professional bowling, the ninth and 10th frames. Obviously, anything can happen at that point as you see the conversion of the 3, 6, 9, 10. Excellent shot by Tommy Baker. For Baker, going at an even 200 pace, as you see him fiddling around with that thumb hole, thumb finger, fiddling around with the finger holes. Once again, he still has problems with his wrist, but he controls it with a nice, smooth speed. Baker, a 200 pace. Tom Baker, who has earned over 583,000 on the tour, current year nearly 25. 
Eli Kent Wagner, in whom you're looking, battling for the $23,000 first prize today. Winner of this match to meet Marshall Holman, then Jimmy Keith, and then Crankin' Bob Hendley. Powerful ball, giving him 142 to eight with a strike up in the ninth. As Kent's mother looks on, she knows the situation for Kent right now is simply this. He has a possible 200 if he can strike here in the 10th, 11th, and 12th frames. If he does not strike on this ball, he can't win the match. He must strike right here. Still alive. All right. But that sets up for Kent Wagner as a possible 200 game. Baker going at a 200 pace, considering he gets a spare and strike in the 10th frame. A good possibility of a tie match in our first game here today. Wagner would even the match with this strike. Strong finish. At a Five foot six inch, hundred twenty pound Kent Wagner, whose wife Lisa in Ohio, one of the five finalists in the Seagram's United States Open. The last three strikes, obviously very important. They have put Kent Wagner in a position to possibly tie or win this match. He needs a full count to put the pressure on Baker. Last shot. A ten. One ninety nine for Kent Wagner. Solid 10 for Kent Wagner right here in the 12th frame. And what this sets up for Tommy Baker is this. Baker must strike on either this ball here in the first one of the 10th or the next shot considering he spares. If he gets anything less, we would have a tie or Tommy would lose the match. Baker has put, him, put himself in the driver's seat. That gives him an 11-pin lead. Watch Baker. He sends it wide. He sends it wide. He says, oh, baby, please hold. Please hold. Trips that four-pin off the sideboard. Tommy just has to keep it a reasonable count on this shot, and he will win this match and go on to meet Marshall Holman. Okay, we have a winner, Tom Baker. Will next go against 20-time champion Marshall Holman, and what a match that should be. Draft smooth. It's beer at its best. By Quaker State Motor Oil. Quaker State people reaching for the best. And by Alka Seltzer. For stomach upset with a headache, send the bubbles of Alka-Seltzer to the rescue. The Professional Bowlers Tour will continue after this message and a word from our local stations. As you can see, I have a large and adoring fan club. To show how much I appreciate their good taste, I'm throwing them an A&W root beer float party. Now, the first thing you do is flip in your ice cream. Then you pour in your rich, creamy A&W root beer. Now you kids try it. Just because they have good taste don't mean they have good aim. Pour yourself an A&W root beer float. Listen to the sound of a closer, smoother shave. Williams Electric Shave sets up my beer, so my shaver shaves closer, and I get a smoother shave. Listen to Williams Electric Shave. Mm. The sound of a closer, smoother shave. Save the clams. What's with Wiley? It's the Monroe Save the Clam Sale. Buy Monroe shocks and struts now and save a save pile of clams. Great. More save clams the for the clam, clam bake. Clam bake? Nice going. See your Monroe right expert today. Max Headroom's on the cover of Newsweek. Don't you just look, look, love it. It's the television of tomorrow. You know, you know, you know me. Straight to the heart. The whole country's mad about Max. They did love me. Max Headroom after Moonlighting, Tuesday.
Within the next 24 hours, this could be yours. A Rent-A-Center home entertainment system. TV, VCR, stereo, dual cassette deck, remote control. Only $19.95 a week, rent to own. And if you're not happy, you get back your first week's rent. Now that's a great deal. Once again, this could be yours. Only $19.95 a week. They're going fast. Call now. Rent-A-Center. Count on us for a great deal. I believe I can see what a deal this will be. Hey, hey, hey! A burger so high, a drink and hot fries. And what a surprise! It's $1.99 hey, hey. for a limited time. Hey, hey. Just $1.99. It's so fine! What a deal! Woo! It's hot! What a deal! That you got! The Greatest Mystery, Easter Around the World, 7 a.m. Sunday. Five years ago, right here at the Greater Hartford Open, 18-year-old Pete Weber went head-to-head -head with Pete McCordick to an exciting end to win his first PBA title. We join the action in a climactic tense frame. Pete Weber, with a seven-counter better, will force Pete McCordick to throw two strikes. He has never won. A PBA title. Just enough, David. Seven's as good as a strike because what that sets up is a 2 10 game. McCordick must strike twice to win. Tom Baker, 220, with seven strikes, eliminating Kent Wagner. Now it's up to his wife, Lisa, in Ohio to win a professional championship this afternoon. 199. Marshall Holm, the defending Firestone Tournament of Champions man, goes against Baker here in our second game. Baker shooting first. This week is high game, 279. on the left lane. Confused. You're right, Chris. Just a little bit confused. He's been highlight, highlight. Reached back for a little extra in the ninth and 10th frames last game and ended up with a fine 220. But he probably need more than that against Marshall Holman, whose style really fits these lanes. The top three players all throw the big, powerful hook ball with a lot of speed. Baker has his hands full. Marking with a spare. And incidentally, on the remember when Pete Weber this week finished seventh, Ken Johnson was sixth, Pete's dad Dick was 48th, and Nelson Burton was 23rd. Snuck a check in now. I guess. <laughs> they love to hate him. Here he is, Marshall Holman. Week after week, he's in contention. His last appearance in Toledo at the PBA National Championship was absolutely crushed in the second round game by eventual winner Randy Peterson. And he has left the two and sleeper eight. The famous profile of Holman. He's been on the championship round 87 times. That low profile wrist cock. There's a great shot right there as he pivots into that step, rolls that ball back on his forearm and rotates the fingers and wrist around the ball. Obviously, he didn't give it enough power that time. He leaves a difficult 2-8 spare to start the match. Bowling pins are all in an equilateral triangle. Those pins are exactly 12 inches apart from base to base. Get some. And on the Professional Bowlers Tour tip of the week, Nelson Burton will take you behind the scenes of bowling. Another look at that. A power spare. Obviously, you need to drive through the two pin, then take out the eight. If you don't have enough power, the ball will deflect and not carry out the eight pin. Holman, as we well know, a power player, but one of the best spare shooters the game has ever seen. Doesn't give his opponent too many openings. Marshall's main problem, if he has any in a championship round, is himself. He has he slowed his pace down now, his tempo. 
until he's set. Now watch him go. Oh, yes. We mentioned that this man has been on television 87 times. Earl Anthony, 114, and Mark Roth, 94. Hmm. Bo, this will be your 22nd Firestone coming up, right? 22nd, I believe, Chris. I think you're counting. Uh, probably the only person who would know would be the Eternal Revenue. <laughs> for sure. Here's Tommy Baker. That short grip, extended index finger for balance, supporting that wrist with his left hand. Leaving the 3-6 on the right lane. Remember, he won the first game 220 to 199. For Tommy Baker, his ball speed around 16 miles an hour. You'll see Holman about 18. And if you haven't seen the man who will be coming up in the semifinal match, James Keith, Jimmy Keith, they call him the rocket out here, throws about the hardest ball I've ever seen in professional bowling. Here's Baker for the spare. And then our tournament leader, Bob Hanley, Hook and Bob. And there you see the titles, 20 by Holman, 7 by Baker, 3 by our tournament leader. And Kent Wagner lost in the first match, 220 to 199, gets a check for 5,000. Loser of this match gets 6,000, but the winner, another step closer to the $23,000 first prize. The grip of Tommy Baker. Bad wrist, operation and all, still can compete very well on the tour. A ten. When Baker first came out on the tour, he was a power player, but this shot is evidence that he doesn't quite get the power. Watch the ball deflect over towards the nine pin as it goes through the 1-3 zone, hits the five, and see it go to the right. You see a player like Holman, Keith, or Hanley coming up, the ball will go to the left. Since you're a student of uh, the economy and economics, I read where Connecticut, this beautiful state, is now the country's highest per capita income. And I saw the governor of New Jersey also gave a profile for that state as it moved into the number three position. And our good friend Frank Esposito, obviously from that state, probably uh, <laughs> takes a, a large part of that economy. <laughs> That per capita income, is, the average is $19,208, which makes Governor William O'Neill happy. <laughs> All right, Holman for a double. Two powerful strikes by Marshall Holman going for his 21st championship. On that shot brought to you by our director, Doug Wilson, you saw the ball of Holman drive through the 1-3 and then hook right into the 8-pin. Obviously, two different styles out here. Baker playing the soft trajectory, sending it wide, trying to, keep him, trying to keep the ball in play. Holman on the attack at all times has a 13-pin lead, can extend that lead to 23 with a third consecutive strike. Unlike the professional bowlers, it's such a singular effort. We have a great team effort at ABC Sports. Bo mentioned our director, Doug Wilson, our producer, Peter Lasser. Tons of talented people. Three in a row and leads by 23 pins. And a typical jubilation gesture by Holman. We'll be back. I've been shot at, shot up, and shot down. So I don't take chances on anything. I won't touch a filter that isn't from AC. Why mess with air filters that can't go for up to 30,000 miles? Or oil filters that can't deliver up to 15,000? For the AC Delco retailer nearest you, just give me a call at 1-800-AC-DELCO. If you put your muscle into a job, use your head and do it with AC Delco. Know what I'm doing? <laughs> feeding my lawn. You know what I'm doing now? I'm feeding my lawn. Yep, I'm still feeding my lawn. And look at my thick green lawn. It loves what it's eating. New Hypenex Lawn Fertilizer. Hypenex is higher in essential nutrients than the leading national brand. And its time-release formula keeps your lawn greener longer. Guaranteed. What am I doing now? Feeding, feeding your lawn. lawn! No, I'm feeding my dog. Try new Hypenex lawn products today. And finale, bowling's best take aim at the third jewel in their triple crown, the Firestone Tournament of Champions, next Saturday on ABC Sports. All right, we're looking at Tom Baker of Buffalo, New York, winner of seven championships 
And there's a man. We were talking about finance. Here's a good man to know, the senior vice president of ABC Sports. We welcome him to uh, the Greater Hartford Open, Steve Solomon. Steve, I met with him Monday in uh, New York with Dennis Swanson, very enthusiastic about their Boeing, and they told us that Boeing will be on for many years on ABC. Just a two-hour drive up here from New York City to Hartford. Now, here's Baker, trails by 23 pins, fourth frame. All right. Bo said a two-hour drive from New York. Well, if you're Bobby Rahal in an Indianapolis car, you could make it in two. Well, I thought that new 65 was in, partner. <laughs> All right. Now, Baker, a very critical shot in this match. He's been high the first three frames, made the adjustment on the right-hand lane, hit light, scrambled the pins up. Now he has to make adjustment on this lane, moving left on the approach, looking down at the approach. He moved approximately three boards left. We'll send the ball wide. Hopefully that's enough compensation for the high hit. Oh, he needed that one to get his double. That was a shooting for a strike in the fifth frame, 10 pin. That wrist injury that Tommy suffered five or six years back really came into play there. He used to be such a strong player, and he's a strong young man, but that wrist has a big scar down the side, and he just cannot snap that wrist to the ball and carry out the week 10 like he used to. Jimmy Keith continues to warm up. He is the man that throws... Oh, did you hear that rocket? <laughs> well, he, it was so fast, it got only two pins as he's practicing off to the right. It's incredibly fast. Marshall Holman coming up fifth frame has three strikes in a row. Could extend his lead to Tommy over Tommy Baker to 33 with one more strike. All right, now he has a four bagger. We asked uh, Marshall Holman about his reactions in Toledo. The Firestone is the biggest tournament we have. Uh, I would love to be the first to win it back to back. I've thought about it, but. Uh, you know, when I go into a tournament, any tournament, uh, I think about just making that top 24 first, then the top five, then I'll think about winning it. You have to take it in stages. That was about winning back-to-back uh, -back Firestones. And Toledo Marshall had a bad day, and uh, he'd just soon forget it as, as all of us when we have a bad day. Now, Holman, 33-pin lead scoreboard, tells the story can extend to 43 with a fifth strike. He marked with a spare in the first, and this is the way he goes. Watch this reaction as Holman screams out a very positive reaction. Here he goes. And the whole crowd could hear it, and his opponent, yeah, I'm in control. Let's see how Baker reacts to that. Baker, a very tough, tough individual, mentally and physically, but he has a big problem, 43-pin deficit. got a string going which he needs because Holman has five. This is our second match. The winner to meet 19-year-old uh, Jimmy Keith at West Palm Beach and then Bob Hanley. I'm sure Tommy's lovely wife Lisa watching this action back at in Buffalo area. Holman a little nervous twitch with the rosin bag. His thumb is all protected with what we call cotton and codeine similar to what they use in hospitals as you see Baker fiddling with the ball. He's in a must situation right here. Trails by 43 can ex cut Holman's lead to 33 right here in the seventh. Yeah, just what he needed. Tom Baker. We're going to leave the Greater Hartford open, but then we'll be back. It's real. I know it's real. There was a time when there was only one kind of beer. Rich, smooth, draft beer. It wasn't pasteurized or tampered with. It was just real beer. Miller Genuine Draft is as real as that. It's not heat pasteurized like most other beers. It's cold filtered, so it's as rich and smooth as only real draft beer can be. Miller Genuine Draft. It's as real as it gets. This is the place you come to for everything you're looking for. This is the place that lives a healthy. 
Ace Best Buys, like 20 Ace Heavy Duty Trash Bags for $249. Ace is the place. An Ace Round Point Shovel for $299 after rebate. And Wells Lamont Cowhide Work Gloves for $499 with free canvas gloves. Ace is the place. As we're a little behind our allotted time schedule of 90 minutes, uh, Marshall Holman left the four pin in the seventh round. Marshall the spare after five in a row, still with a comfortable lead. And in the booth with us today, uh, one of our experts on ABC, Jeff Hastings, who will be doing our color commentary for the 1988 Winter Olympics. He'll be doing the 70 meter and 90 meter, I call it, ski jumping, and I don't know what it is. It looks pretty tricky to me, Chris, plus the team competition. So welcome to Pro Bowling, Pro Bowling Tour, Jeff, and good luck at the Olympics. I'm sure you'll do a good job. Well, we're liable to make a bowler out of him. Good athlete. They have to be to be top-notch ski jumpers, which, of course, Jeff was. Holman, 32-pin lead, eighth frame. Back striking. Marshall Holman, fourth appearance this year on television. Our uh, professional bowlers tour tip of the week has to do with a behind-the-scenes look, as only Nelson can do it. Well, for the people, we have millions that watch us at home, the ones that never had the luxury of coming to a professional bowlers association tournament, it'll be very interesting to see what the pros do to prepare for a championship round. Now, Baker, eighth frame, trails by 32 in a must situation, has two strikes working and cut the lead of Holman's down to 22 with another strike. Picture perfect. Four big ones striking out in his first match, which he won 220 to 199. By far, Tommy Baker's best shot of the day. The ball driving through the 1-3. Now watch, it doesn't deflect this time. Bang! Straight through the, the middle of the rack. Almost leaves a solid nine. You know, Chris, when Holman was so demonstrative in the sixth frame, mm -hmm. shouting out, he seemed to have awakened Tommy Baker. A little bit like the end of Torah, Torah, Torah. Awakened a sleeping giant. Let's see if he can take advantage of that three strikes in a row and cut Holman's lead down to just 12 pins, ninth frame. down deep. Baker getting stronger with each shot. Ball, 1-3. Fives the five over in the 4-7 area. Tremendous spin on that shot. He now has a chance in the match. He's given Marshall Holman a little bit of his own medicine. He's coming back. He only trails by 12. Let's see how Holman reacts here in the ninth frame with a little pressure on him. Answers the challenge of Tommy Baker with one of his best shots of the day. Now watch the great style, the good swing, arm close to the body, good wrist action. Second arrow out to about the fourth board. Then watch these three pounds, seven and eight ounce pins dance as Holman is back in control. Now Holman going at a 249 pace with the, a strike would lock out Baker. If he does not strike, Baker still has a chance. Marshall Holman. Winning the United States Open in 81 and 85, two Firestone victories in 76 and 86. Not over yet. Holman with a spare and a strike would be 248. That's considering he gets all these pins, then knocks the seven pin down, and strikes. He would win the match. If he gets anything less, Baker could come up in the tenth frame, and if he can duplicate what he did in the first match against Kent Wagner, would either tie or win the match. It's not over yet. I'm looking at the average leader for 1987, Marshall Holman, averaging 217.12. Uh, coming over to get some tape. A lesson well learned experience. This is no 
psychological ploy by Marshall Holman to slow down the match. He lost the first ball off his hand, almost missed the seven pin when it slid off his hand, and amateurs at home and pros alike should have no fear of adding a piece of tape to the thumb hole. You can see how nervous he is. Watch. You think experience? Look at him shaking. He knows he needs a strike to win the match. Anything less, he could be in a tie or lose the match. He'll put this piece of tape right over a gripper and stick it back at the front edge of the thumb hole where he grips the ball. Hopefully they get the real good feel and lift. The ball should just feel nice and comfortable on your hand. You don't need to squeeze it. If you squeeze with your thumb and fingers, you kill the shot. You want it to just set right in the palm of your hand. Now, for Holman, as he comes up in the 11th, a strike he wins. Anything less, the match is up for grabs. care of the bowling ball with uh, a little of Johnson and Johnson carefully setting up with eight strikes shooting a 248 he will meet Jimmy Key don't miss that match coming up okay time now for the bowling tip for the week coming up watch and listen Jimmy Keith Marshall Holman Marshall Holman with a 248 We'll have Baker's score when we come back. The Professional Bowlers Tour Tip of the Week is brought to you by Old Spice. Its subtle masculine fragrance is the classic scent of the American male. Come on in. Let's take a close-up look at what goes on behind the tournament scenes in the Professional Bowlers Tour. This is the paddock area, where all 160 players prepare for the tournament. Every day the players come in here, start working on their bowling balls. Now with 160 players, there are about eight bowling balls. That's almost 1,300 bowling balls in this room. Also, they have to have their shirts available and ready to go. The players use as many as 10 shirts during the week. That's almost 1,600 shirts that we use through the week. And obviously the area is not much bigger than the locker room and the NBA, which only uses 12 players. The most important tool for a professional bowler is his bowling ball. Now, Larry Lichstein has a rolling pro shop where he drills balls for all the professional bowlers. After they have the ball drilled, they bring it into the paddock area and bring it over to the workbench, where they put the final touches on either the thumb hole or the finger holes to make that ball fit just right in their hand. After they work it out, they must weigh the ball in to certify it for PBA use. Now, Larry, what is the procedure for a player to get his ball certified for use? Nelson, the first test is the mill hole test. What we want to do is test the inner hardness of the ball against the outer hardness of the ball to make sure the outside surface was not tampered with with any kind of solvent. Thanks, Mike. Now what's next, Larry? Nelson, the next test is to weigh the ball. All bowling balls have seven weights that we check. Finger weight, thumb weight, positive side weight, negative side weight, top weight, bottom weight, and gross weight. Right now, we're just going to test the gross weight of this ball to make sure it meets American Bowling Congress specifications. Right now, this ball is 15 pounds, 12 ounces, so it does meet the 16 pound or under specification. Now we're going to give it to Kurt Schmidt. Kurt is going to be testing the ball's hardness in the mill hole that we just put in, where it's 70. The outside hardness of the ball, which is 77, which means this ball does pass the hardness specifications. He's going to be examining the bowling ball to make sure that he checks the finger hole depth to make sure finger grips are or are not being used if the ball has any extra holes, etc. Okay, Kurt, this ball is ready for PBA play. You've written the serial number down on a player's card, and yes, with that type of weight, I'm sure you'll trip a lot of six pins, and the player will have a lot of good luck. So now you've seen how a player prepares for the professional bowler's tour. In the paddock, he has his bowling ball, his shirt, and he's ready for play. What kind of man whistled the Old Spice tune? He's my daddy. My practically perfect husband. You can count on him. He's the captain of my ship. He's a friend. The Old Spice man, a man's man. Clean, refreshing Old Spice. It's the favorite scent of the American man, and he'll never change his tune. And I love him for it. Old Spice. 
The ring will be rocking. Undefeated champion Mike McCallum defends his WBA junior middleweight title against former champ Milton McCrory. Plus, undefeated Meldrick Taylor in a super lightweight bout. It's live doubleheader action when ABC Sports presents Schlitz Malt Liquor Professional Boxing tomorrow. In our second match with eight strikes, Marshall Holman, 248, Tom Baker, 226. Now it's 32-year-old Holman against 19-year-old slugger named Jimmy Keith of West Palm Beach, Florida. He's on the right, and he's ready. Chris, of all the players that have come out in the last few years, power players, even the pros stand behind this young man and watch the shot. If you've never seen this young man bowl, he made the championship round at the Miller Lite Championship in Milwaukee, lost his first match. But watch this release, watch the power. They almost crumbled. What an onslaught by the bowling ball. And here's the man with a 248 victory over Tom Baker's 226. Holman, no slouch in the power department as our tournament leader, Bob Hanley. So the fans of the home run hitters in bowling, stay tuned for the next 45 minutes. You'll see nothing but pins being driven straight back, sideways, and every which way. Now, Holman, the hot hand, 248 the first game, first shot, semifinal match. Didn't get the 10. Holman, who had been light in the pocket or solid every shot in the first match, gets just in between, leaves what we call the half 10. And watch how Holman attacks spares. These big hook ball players both still convert spares very well. Holman, with what we call a spin technique, he breaks his wrist back, backwards, instead of cupping it up, and spins the ball. That cuts all the roll off of it. It doesn't bite the lane service. A very accurate shot. Beautifully done. Seemed to be a little bit apprehensive, but no concern. Marshall Holman, who is adjusting his shoelaces, wiping the lane oil or conditioner off the ball, obviously to get a smooth roll on every shot, has everything prepared. As you alluded to, Chris, taking a little more time. Maybe he's mm -hmm. learned a lesson. He bowled very well that first match, no doubt. Once he gets that, though, pulls the trigger in a hurry. That's the key. And he now has left a 2-5. Now, we're going to watch his mental approach to the game from now on. The head pin to the sideboard knocks out the four and seven and eight pins but leaves the two and five pins. Holman, as I said, a good spare shooter, but any player is likely to chop a two-five split at any time, so he has to be very careful. And obviously the first two balls, Marshall Holman lost off his hand. Remember he put a piece of tape in on his 11th shot in that match, the last match. Maybe he needs another piece of tape to get the good lift on the ball. Spin shot down the left side. And there you are. Rubble. And this is a man who's such a perfectionist that if things don't go the way he thinks they should, he often falls apart. So with that open frame coming in the second. The ball trying to hold the spin back, but takes just a little break, picks the two off the five, gives an opening to young Jimmy Keith here in the opening two frames. I first heard about him from a pal of mine in Florida, Herb Glass from Lake Worth, who uh, collects guns. And he said there's a real shooter from West Palm Beach. Strong and here he is. Strongest I've ever seen. Look at him cuff that ball, roll it back on his wrist. He's double jointed, Chris. He can roll his thumb back. Now look at the fingers go straight through the ball. People say, how do pro bowlers get the hook? There's the epitome of power. Nothing around the side of the ball. All uplift, all power. Watch this release. He's a little bit wild sometimes, but when he cuts it loose, look out. It's such action. 5'11", 160 pounds. Three in a row for Jimmy Keith. Now, watch this release. I have a feeling you're going to see this a lot more in professional. Look at him rolling back on his wrist, double-jointed. Now shovels it out, never, ever goes around the side of the ball, and he makes those pins talk. 
okay, but Marshall Eckman Evans comes back with a lazy strike. Imagine <laughs> 20 titles, four majors, this man. What a career. You're right, Chris, and uh, we all have a tendency to uh, say lazy strike after watching Keith's ball dynamite the pins out all week long, but by no means does Holman throw a weak bowling ball, and don't count him out in any match. He trails by 33 against an inexperienced young bowler. Holman will definitely put the pressure on him in the next few frames. I like his preparation. back with a double in our third match of the afternoon. The semifinal prelude to the final match. We'll be back. Before any race, Rick Mears has a lot on his mind. His car, his competition, but not his motor oil. Because he uses Pennzoil. In all his years of racing with Pennzoil, he's never had an oil-related breakdown. Which explains why Rick Mears isn't just one of the fastest men in racing history. But one of the smartest as well. Pennzoil, the standard of protection since 1889. Now, during Pennzoil's Indy Winter Sale, get 20 cents back on every quart or $3 back on every case of quality Pennzoil. There are many ways to end the paperwork overload. You can blow it off, dump it on someone else, or blow it away for good. But the best solution is Radio Shack's high-speed, high-capacity Tandy 1000SX. It's PC-compatible and comes with a monitor and a 20-megabyte hard disk that stores over 5,000 pages of information. The highly acclaimed Tandy 1000SX, a complete hard disk system for only $15.99 at Radio Shack. Fifth frame shot. Jimmy Keith of West Palm Beach has left the four pin after stringing four. We had to uh, leave the action because we're running behind our time schedule, but Bo, his strike in the fourth was something to behold. Well, Chris, he uh, kind of panicked on the way to the line, lost that big hook, crossed over, got a Brooklyn strike, and right now, watch this spear shot. You talk about killing the shot. He throws it hard and straight. We timed his shot at upward at 24 miles an hour on this. <laughs> <laughs> Two bounces. All right, let's go back and look at that fourth frame strike. Watch it at the end. Well, when you have tremendous power, you have to sacrifice a little accuracy. Obviously, Jimmy Keith, when you see the reaction, this ball just turns left about 45 feet down the line, crosses over. Look at the ball. The ball actually took out the seven pin. You talk about a hook. It's solid on the Brooklyn. It almost had the ball hook in the left channel. Holman coming back. Trails by 32, has two strikes working. Big shot. Trails to only 22. Marshall Holman, if you just joined us, won his previous match over Tom Baker, 248-226. The sashaying of Marshall Holman makes the pins dance. He drives the four, five, seven, all together, and he likes to strike. He's a little bit sedated now, but if he gets this strike here, he'll definitely show Jimmy Keith what it's all about. This is going to be a very tough match of giant power bowling balls. Look at him. Now Marshall Holman has four in a row. And Jimmy Keith's lead is 12 pins. He'll now be shooting the six with a spare up. Jimmy Keith, nicknamed Yaba, Y-A-B-A, -A, because... All the players like Jimmy come out of the Young American Bowling Alliance. He was a junior bowler just two years ago. Here he is bowling for a major championship on the professional bowlers tour against the great one, Marshall Holman. Keith, a 12-pin lead, six frame. Took some speed off that shot, leaving the 6-10. Keith, obviously a little bit off his target here on the right-hand lane in the fourth frame. He crosses all the way over. It's a good break. It's a strike to extend the streak to four. Leaves a four pin in the fifth frame and now has left a 6-10 spare with a conversion. He would be just 10 pins ahead. Watch how he throws this rocket shot. That's where he gets his name at the spares. All right. There you have Jimmy Keith. Our Schlitzmalt Liquor Professional Boxing tomorrow. The WBA Junior Middleweight Championship, Mike McCallum versus talent Milt McCrory. <clears throat> Excuse me, that's live from Phoenix.
And then a super lightweight fight, Meldrick Taylor and Primo Ramos. What a doubleheader that is. Chris, Taylor will knock out Ramos. What do you think about McCallum and McCrory? That's pretty even. Two talented fighters. I'll take McCrory. And he leaves the 2458 now. Jimmy Keith, the teenager in the field at 19. The action of Keith's ball, he comes in light. The head pin goes to the sideboard, but not quite enough action. He just gets the seven out and leaves four difficult pins. Not only is it a difficult spare, but in this situation, he's struggled the last three frames. He needs to convert this spare to maintain a six-pin lead. Otherwise, Holman would have the lead. And there he does some chopping of his own, giving him 152 through the seventh, and now he trails by five. Too much speed, too far to the left. Right now, Jimmy Keith has dug himself a hole. He has given Holman a five-pin lead. We'll be right back after this. Look up, my watch, it was 931, so I called my baby, said, let's have some fun, and we rode. Right now, it's rocket rebate time at your Honda motorcycle dealer, and that means it's time to roll up big savings. You can save $100 to $1,000 on selected models. Apply these savings to your down payment or get cash back from Honda. The choice is yours, but hurry. Honda's rocket rebate is good for a limited time only. Rolling from the break of dawn. In 1973, a small bar served the first light beer. The response was unanimous. Tastes great. Here was a beer with its own special brewing process. Less filling. It's brewed from the ground up, not watered down. Tastes great. It's less filling. Tastes Today there are lots of lights around, but none are brewed like Miller Light, and none can match the taste. Tastes great. Tastes great. Hey, sounds like that kind of place. There's only one light beer, Miller Lite. It's the grand finale. Bowling's best take aim at the third jewel in their triple crown, the Firestone Tournament of Champions, next Saturday on ABC Sports. And here in Connecticut, the defending champion is in the red shirt. Since we're running behind our time schedule, he bowled in the seventh, he left the seventh, marked with a spare after four in a row. Now, uh, with a four-pin lead, he's shooting in the eighth frame. Here's his opponent, 19-year-old Jimmy Keith. I hit, and he's left the four. Both power players, uh, I don't know whether it, I can't say it's fear or respect, both getting tentative here in the last three frames. Holman, normally at this point in a match when he has a lead, would take the bull by the horns amp that ball up, go with a little extra power, and he's been tentative here in the seventh frame. He left the seventh pin, once again the eighth frame, floats it a little high and leaves the four pin. A spare here would give him a three pin lead with just two frames remaining. James Keith, press device on, filling with the rosin. So three pins now. The lead by Marshall Holman. After an open eighth frame, Jimmy Keith, who finished second overall in the field of 160. Harry gets them all in the eighth. In Milwaukee, he finished fifth this year. We asked him the nervousness in Milwaukee. What did he learn? Well, hopefully my nerves won't bother me today as much as they did the first time. But first six frames, I was nervous. But after that, I struck out. Hopefully I can do that all 12 frames today. Well, he started with four in a row. Had a strike in the last frame, the eighth now in the big ninth. Needs a strike to take the lead. Leaving a two. Just lost that ball on the downswing, a bit nervous again. His nerves not being settled in that position gave Holman a tremendous break there where if he could have struck, he could have put Holman on the ropes. The match is not over, but this young man has to keep a, his chin up. The, he still has a chance. Spare the night, Jimmy Keith, West Palm Beach. The winner of this match will meet the tournament leader, Bob Handley of Pompano Beach, Florida. 
Here's where Marshall Holman's experience, Chris, I believe, will come in. He knew that he had a chance to fall behind Keith if Keith could have struck there in the ninth frame. He saw that little bit tentative shot by James Keith. Let's see what Marshall does. He should really strap it up here. He knows he's in the driver's seat. Very professional shot. Holman, no doubt about this shot. Drives through the one, three, the ball takes out the five and nine pins. The rest of the pins do their job. Holman's doing his job. For Marshall Holman right now, a strike and then any good count, he would lock out Jimmy Keith. If he does not strike, Keith can come up in the 10th frame and still win the match. turnaround. I've never seen Marshall Holman in this posture. He's put himself in a position where he's just handing the match to Jimmy Keith. Holman should still take his time and knock over two pins. It's important to maintain the count. I don't know if he's thinking. Yes, he is. Now what this sets up is a situation all in Jimmy Keith's favor. All that Keith needs to do is get a mark and he's handed the match. And this young man never being in this position before. Let's see how he reacts. He struggled a little bit. He started very quickly, struggled in the last five frames. Let's see if he can take advantage of this tremendous break handed him by Marshall Holman. Mm. I hit, and he has left the 3-6. Marshall Holman in his fourth appearance on television this year. The big boys, with the pressure on each other, cannot let the ball go here under the under the gun. And as Ma Marshall turns around to talk to Terry Chenard, his, his girlfriend, he says, Jimmy needs a spare. If Keith spares, he wins the match. If he doesn't, Holman goes on to meet Hanley. Just making the left side of the three pin. So Keith. Well, Nate Hanley, the professional bowlers tour, will continue after this message and a word from our local station. <laughs> two ten to two o three. Spring is the time when colors bloom and savings unfold inside the new spring catalog from True Value Hardware Stores. For a good-looking lawn, rely on this powerful Long Chief rear bagging mower for just $189.88. Then keep your yard well-groomed with this weed eater gas trimmer for only $79.88. And for tighter areas, use Green Thumb Cordless Rechargeable Grass Shears. They have non-stick blades and a free 36-inch extension handle for just $24.88 at participating True Value Hardware Stores. No, oh, fellas. Look here, fellas. Let's do one for Mr. Seagram. Now, look here, Mr. Seagram. You sound like my kind of guy. Yay. You make that? Seagram's golden wine cooler. And you make it wet and dry. Oh, now, Mr. Seagram. You're my kind of guy. My, my kind of guy. guy. My kind of guy. Oh, Charlton Heston stars in the Ten Commandments at 7, 6 Central, Sunday. There's another great-looking new Cadillac in town, the exclusive Liberty Edition Coupe de Ville. A specially designed Coupe de Ville from your Cadillac Super Network dealers. Your choice of red, white, or blue exteriors, each with a white, full cabriolet roof and all with special gold-plated wreath and crest hood ornamentation, nameplates, and body trim. See the Liberty Edition Coupe de Ville for yourself, all specially priced by the factory and only from your Cadillac Super Network dealer. What can I get you? What'll you have? Down home flavor. What'll you have? Country flavor. Give me a pass. Oprah
explores the heartbreak of jilted men, Monday at 4. Here in Connecticut, an exciting non-winner, Jimmy Keith, 210 to 20 time winner, Marshall Holman, 203, who was quick to congratulate the teenager. Now, here's Bo Burton with a very special guest. Thank you, Chris. With me is the president of the Women's International Bowling Congress, Helen Baker. And Helen, uh, you run one of the largest organizations in the world, and I know you're excited about the Olympics. Tell me what's coming up in women's bowling. Uh, well, we believe that the Olympics is going to be a terrific boost, not only to women's bowling, but to youth bowling. Because if we can get in the Olympics, which we're trying very hard to do, uh, we think that it will interest the youth in coming back into bowling and being able to represent their country just as they do in other sports. Very interesting. You have over three and a half million members of the Women's International Bowling Congress. What is your group doing here in Hartford? Oh, we're conducting our championship tournament, and we will have, up until about June 3rd, we'll have 37,000 very enthusiastic women bowlers going through here. Well, Helen, you run a first-class organization. I look forward to seeing you again. And, Chris, we're ready for an exciting, exciting championship match. Helen, thank you. Thank you. All right. Lovely lady, Mrs. Baker. Here we go now with the championship match. From Pompano Beach in the striped shirt, Franken Bob Handley. And from West Palm Beach, Jimmy Keith. Two power players. Watch them crank it up. Keith getting into this final game with a 2-10. 203 victory over Marshall Holman. Both players need to win to get into the Firestone. Handley to requalify. Now the crowd here getting behind the teenager, Jimmy Keith, who has left the seven pin. The youngest player, as we look at the pins, to win a tournament was Norm Duke at 18. Jimmy's 19. Chris, the action of the head pin is a savior for this young man. The two pin remains standing. Watch what happens when the head pin and this power take over. Head pins the sideboard out of action, drives in the four, takes out the two. All right. Now, uh, our first look in 103 weeks at Bob Handley. That's as long as it's been that he's been on TV. Nine-year veteran, three championships. An exciting player, originally from Kansas. Hanley, a tough, excuse me, tough experience. Once had a 289 in the championship round on this pair. I think he'll take the bull by the horns in the early going. And the man we call the stalker when he uh, moves from a stationary position to the line. Well, style very similar to Jimmer Keith, a little more upright. He cups that wrist, rolls that ball back, and then he drives through that pivot step. Good uplift at the foul line, puts the pro move on it, and the pins have no chance. Only person that can foul with the right foot. <laughs> You're right, Chris. 1981, he had a hot streak going, had uh, a 289 game, started with three in a row, as you see him cup it. He had his right foot slide around and kick the foul line. I've never seen that before. Now, Hanley to take the lead. Look at that. He's been waiting in the wings, as our uh, tournament director, Harry Golden, would say. And he's been over there practicing a little bit, and he starts out with a double against Jimmy Keith who's now shooting in the second frame, a spare up. To get an idea of how much Jimmy Keith hooks the ball, many people have seen Bob Hanley. He looks like a straight ball player compared to this young man here in the championship game. Oh, yes. Big turn at the end uh, for Jimmy Keith. Watch the profile of Jimmy Keith. He has that unique style, which allows him so much power. He rolls that ball back on his wrist. Now watch it snap through. Hand down, no turn. You see him just drive straight up nice and smooth. Second arrow, first arrow, first board, mm -hmm. and then the 17th board, solid in the hole. Oh, he thought he had them all. Right you are, Chris. Normally when Jimmy Keith hits light, the pins have no chance. Gets in between. Now look at the rotation on his bowling ball. Revolution 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I already quit at 6 on mine. 15, 16, <laughs> 17. How do they stand? Needs this spare to stay close. Fast. The young gunslinger 
on the bowling lanes. He looks the part, doesn't he? Jimmy Keith. Now Bob Hanley double up shooting in the third. Bob Hanley's wife, the former Mary Ellen Majors, now Mary Ellen Hanley, obviously also bowled in the women's U.S. Open held, being held in Ohio, shown, shown later on today. She said she struggled a little bit, but hopefully Bob can win a tournament, get back in the Firestone. He has the early lead, 10 pins, two strikes working. Now he has three. The man who averaged 246 for our eight game uh, matches, winning seven of them to move from seventh to first after the fifth round. 42 game format. Hanley started a bit slow. 40th place, moved up to 16th in the evening walk, qualified seventh, stayed seventh, and on Friday, in the fifth and sixth rounds of match play, he took the lead, averaging a fabulous 249 Friday morning. Led this tournament by right around 100 pins. Right now, he has the 20 pin lead after three frames can extend to 30 with an additional strike. Well, now it's only the five pin. On the left lane, ending the streak at three. And is he happy with this shot? Once again, you see the value of the head pin. It goes to the sideboard, fiddles over around between the two, four, and five, knocks out the two pin, and he leaves Bob a very easy spare. After four frames, he will have a 19 pin lead. Spare for Bob Henley after three strikes. And he has a 19-pin lead. We'll be back. Save the clam. What's with save Wiley? The it's the Monroe Save the Clam Sale. Buy Monroe save shocks and struts now and save a save pile of clams. Clam. Great. More save clams the with clam. a clam bake. Clam bake? Nice going. See your Monroe right expert today. Listen to the sound of a closer, smoother shave. Williams Electric Shave sets up my beard. So my shaver shaves closer. And I get a smoother shave. Listen to William's electric shave. Mm. The sound of a closer, smoother shave. In North Carolina, Honda lawnmowers are assembled from the wheels up. Then the final critical step, the Clara Johnson test. If Clara pulls and it starts, it's a Honda. Ship it. Eating on the runs got you tied in knots. Send the bubbles of Alka-Seltzer to the rescue. Because speed is what you need to loosen the grip of your acid indigestion with a headache fast. Alka-Seltzer to the rescue. The ring will be rocking. Undefeated champion Mike McCallum defends his WBA junior middleweight title against former champ Milton McCrory. Plus, undefeated Melvin Taylor in a super lightweight bout. It's live doubleheader action when ABC Sports presents Schlitz Malt Liquor Professional Boxing tomorrow. Toe-to-toe -to -toe battle here. Jimmy Keith, Bob Hanley, fifth frame. Keith gets the strike. Barber away because we're running behind our allotted time in the fourth frame. He left the 316. Marked with a spare, however. So a 22-pin lead by Bob Hanley. If you just joined us, he opened as the tournament leader. Three in a row, marked with a spare. He will now be shooting in the fifth frame. Bob Hanley, a former school teacher, was a history teacher in Kansas. Gave that up for professional bowling. So far, it's been a wise decision. He's won over a half a million dollars in the Pro Tour. Beautiful strike for Bob Hanley. 34 years old. As far this year, 10,230. Winner's share today is 23,000. Next week, it's $50,000 to the winner at the Firestone Tournament of Champions. Next week, a 52-man field as opposed to 160-man field in our normal tournament, and they bowl 48 games instead of 42. Now, here's Hanley to take a commanding lead with another strike. Early on his game today, remember, as a tournament leader, he has to watch them bowl three games. Here's a man that eliminated Marshall Holman in the last match, 210 to 203. Holman had bested Tom Baker, 248 to 226. Baker won over Kent Wagner, 220 to 199. Very important ball for Jimmy Keith. Trails by 32 pins, has a strike working, can cut Hanley's lead to 22. A 
again on the right lane. You could hear the crack of the pins as Keith's ball drove in from the very first board. Han Hanley not even looking. I wouldn't want to watch either, Bob, if a guy had that much power. <laughs> but Keith definitely in trouble. Needs to make this spare. He'll still be in arrears by 20, 32 pins through six frames. So it's a spare in the six for Jimmy Keith. One of these players will replace Ted Hannes in the Firestone Tournament of Champions. Ted Hannes had a reprieve when Joe Hutchison, who is also eligible for the Firestone Tournament of Champions because of uh, wrist and hand injuries, could not go to the starting gate. He relinquished that to Ted Hannes this week. Ted obviously will have to give up that spot to the winner of this tournament. And the 2-4-5. Things not going right for the 19-year-old from West Palm Beach. Dauber down a little bit. He's bowling quite a bit better in the last few frames, but that 10-pin kind of took the heart out of him. He knows he's bowling against an experienced veteran determined to win in Bob Hanley. Once again, Keith just stay within himself, make the spares, maybe something good will happen. All right. That is a seventh frame spare. Bob Hanley leading by 35. More after this. Heaven on Earth. Don't get him started about his car. <laughs> hey, Pete, toss me the Quaker State. This new Quaker State with QSX is a miracle. It gives car-carrying people superior engine protection. Look at the sludge conventional motor oils leave behind. New Quaker State with QSX keeps your engine cleaner to last longer. And that means I might spend the rest of my life in heaven. Warn you. So Quaker State I've been doing a lot of thinking lately about Miller Lite. What a profound concept. It's got a third less calories than I probably thought I didn't even have. And it's less filling than it would have been if it was more filling than they didn't want it to be. Plus, it tastes as great as you expect. If it had more calories than it didn't have in the first place. Think about that. In other words, there's only one light beer, because if there wasn't, he wouldn't be saying there is. Right, yo? <laughs> Only Just because you've washed your car doesn't mean you're finished. After each wash, you need some armor all on the dash, the bumper, and especially the tires. Armor all. It's the finishing touch every time you wash your car. And now, introducing Clean Start, the new cleaner which safely removes tough dirt. Clean Start, only from Armor All products. There's a plan for building a house. You should have a plan for moving out of one. That's why Ryder gives you our Move It Yourself guide. Mom, look what I found. It helps you handle every step, from picking the best truck, to packing your lamps, to shutting off the power. Got a spot for this? Oh. What's that? Here. Ryder. We're there at every turn. Bob Handley with the strike in the seventh, left to ten in the eighth, covered it for his spare. Keith spare working. Finally gets another strike, this one in the eighth frame. The reason we uh, bowl through is our time is only 90 minutes because of uh, style of play, tempo of play. Sometimes we just get a little tight on time, so bringing the match to its conclusion, we need to do what we just did. Hope you understand. Jimmy Keith with a shot there in the eighth i call it the paralyzer ball came in just paralyzed the pins needs a strike in the ninth he cannot win if he does not strike on this ball there again that powerful ball dancing him off the deck chris that's the style you like to see don't you i love it remember bob hanley when he came up with that awesome awesome power has cut it down a little bit has it much more under control obviously has good control of this match just has to stay clean mark in the ninth and tenth frames as his wife mary ellen looks on hanley just has to mark in the last two frames to win the match big big mark remember that on tv for 103 weeks 
Well, he knows where the winner's circle is because he obviously locked up this match with that strike. Even if he opens here in the 10th frame, all he needs is uh, nine pins on two balls. Chris, he has a lock victory. So uh, Hanley, with a little more experience, has cut down his hook, is in the driver's seat. And the big thing is that he'll requalify for the Firestone at chance at 50 grand. And he's a definite contender for that title with his style. Running them out. Jubilation on the part of a normally classic Bob Hanley, but at 34 years of age, he probably thought there was no way he could come back and do it again. But he's doing it. He has done it. Hanley just saws up the pins with that style, the stalker style that has always been so powerful. It's a winner now. He'll be in the 240s. 247 with a spare. He'll be the winner. Meanwhile, Jimmy Keith is up. Finishing out, he has a potential 220, which just... But it'll be 12 grand for Jimmy to add to his 12,315 he has earned already this year. So it is Handley the winner. Okay, the Professional Bowlers Tour is brought to you by Seagram's Wine Coolers. Everyone a champion. By Ryder. We're there at every turn. And by Armorall. It's the finishing touch every time you wash your car. Okay, there's Ken West, the tournament sponsor, with the trophy and the check for 23 is Mary Ellen and Bob Hook and Hanley. Ah, tears of joy on the part of Mary Ellen. Bob is back in the Firestone shooting a 247 today. But what a performance by Jimmy Keith. He can only garner 201 for the final match. Coming up next on ABC's Wide World of Sports, it's the World Welterweight Championship. Undefeated Lloyd Hunnigan puts his title on the line against undefeated Maurice Blocker. Plus, top three-year-olds continue their road to the Kentucky Derby and the Wood Memorial Invitational. Both events will be seen live, except on the West Coast. Also, Wide World's Athlete of the Week Award. It's all coming up next on ABC Sports. Chris Shankle along with Bo Burton saying, Happy Easter and so long from Windsor Locks, Connecticut. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports. Once again, the final score, Bob Hanley, 247, Jimmy 